Hello, Shanae. Hello, Coco. Hi, guys. Hi, Christoph. Hi, Shanae. How are you? Good. Good. Good, good. I should say Merry Christmas from Poland. <laughs> Is it snowing again? Yes. Oh, uh, no. A thick layer, layer of snow. Oh, jeez. Well, it's not snowing here. <laughs> so. Hi, Louise. Hi, Shane. Hi. How, Hi, how are you? Hi, Christopher. I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. Good. What about you and the baby? We're good. We're good. So, we have our, um, Jeff and I are taking like a, a birth class. And our second class is tonight, so we're good. <laughs> so we have an appointment, uh, doctor's appointment on Thursday. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, Christoph, I know that you had asked me um, why the change in the story. Yes. Yes. Um, it was because the first time it was published and written, it was for kids, so they wanted it to be more kid friendly and not have the man die. So that's why. So it was published in like a children's magazine the first time it was published. So um, Jack London didn't write it as such as he did in 1908. So that's why. So he uh, had a thought uh, to kill the man at first time? I think so, I think so. Um, but because it was to be published for kids, he kept it more uh, PG. <laughs> so, yeah, instead of PG-13 or R. <laughs> and he sanitized the belt. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He made it more, um, more happy than this one that we read, so. Because it is not happy, that one. No, no, this is not a happy story. No, it's a sad story, that's for sure. So, yes. Hey, Marcos, how are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good, I'm good. So, everyone got a chance to read the rest of the story? Almost so. Yes, Marcus? Yeah. Almost, almost. Almost? Almost, almost so. Almost. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, Louise, you read the rest of it? Yes, I, I've just read the 10 first paragraphs. I, I've i traveled these weekends. Oh, so, I, you, I've so you did not finish it? Yeah, I've, I've just arrived. Uh, I've been one hour, I've arrived at home. Okay, all right. Christoph, I know you read the whole thing. Coco, and you finished yeah. as well? Yeah. I read the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christoph read both. Okay, all right. Um, did everybody watch this? Uh, by the way, Mauricio will not be joining us today. I guess he has a meeting. So, um, hi, Mauricio. <laughs> At your meeting. Hi. Yes. <laughs> um, he'll be watching this later. So, um, let's first start to talk about the context clues and the summarizing video. So, Marcos, I had a chance to kind of chat with you a little bit um, through the course chat over about the context clues. Um, did that work for you better with writing them down and looking them up later when it was just too much in one sentence? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I just can can't. Uh, I, I just can't, can't guess what what a word mean means if I don't don't know the other words. True. But I, but I, I uh, have made a list. I have made a, a list with with the words I don't know and. Mm -hmm. Then I read. 
and I I look at these words in the dictionary, not in not in the translator. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look in it. Use an English dictionary is very helpful. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. So, um. So if you remember from the context clues video, you know, the idea was that if you have a sentence um, with um, a word that's unfamiliar to you, um, then to use the, the words around it. So I actually want to take a sentence from the text, uh, or a couple sentences from the text, um, and see if we can how you would use this to figure out the word carcass. Okay? So, uh, the, the little passage is, the sight of the dog put a wild idea into his head. He remembered the tail of the man caught in a blizzard who killed a steer and crawled inside the carcass and so was saved. So you might be reading that going, I have no idea what the word carcass means. So, you have to look at the context around it to, to figure it out. So, um, the tail of a man, you know, obviously men don't have, there's two tails. There's tail and tail. Um, obviously, we as humans do not have a tail. Um, but a tail is a story. So, you know that you could reread this as he remembered the story of the man caught in a blizzard. Everybody knows what a blizzard is, right? We know that a blizzard is a bad snowstorm. We know that. And we also know from this sentence that the man killed the steer and so was saved. So we know that because he killed the steer, he was saved. So we know all of this. This is part of using context. So this is kind of the thought process that you would go through in your brain. And you also have the little phrase, and crawled inside, crawled inside the carcass. So if the steer is dead and the man was saved because of the dead steer and he crawled inside the carcass, what's a carcass? The dead body. Yeah, the dead body, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of a way that you could use... Um, context clues to figure out um, that word. Um, let me see if I can find another one. Um, okay, let's do this one. So the passage is, a certain fear of death, dull and oppressive, came to him. This fear quickly became poignant as he realized that it was no longer a mere matter of freezing his fingers and toes or of losing his hands and feet, but, it thought it, but that it was a matter of life and death with the chances against him. So let's use the context to figure out the word poignant. Okay? So... What is the man afraid of? What the first sentence of this passage lets us know what this man is afraid of. What is it that he's afraid of? The freezing with fingers and toes. That's part of look at the first sentence. What was it, a certain fear of death. of death. death? Yeah. Because of the toes. Right. Yeah. So we know that he is afraid of of death by freezing, that he's afraid of death by freezing, and that the um, that it's no longer a matter of just losing fingers and toes and hands and feet to frostbite. And we also know from the last part that what how good are his chances of surviving? Does he have a better chance to live, or does he have a better chance to die at this to point? Die. To die. To die. Mm -hmm. So this fear quickly became poignant. 
What do you think poignant means from knowing that he's afraid of dying by freezing and he knows that his chances of dying are higher than living? What do you think the word poignant means? I know. <laughs> but, uh, sharp, maybe, or big. <laughs> Touch them sharply. <laughs> okay. So this fear quickly became poignant as he realized it was no, lotter, no longer a mere matter of freezing. How would you describe, how would you define the word poignant? Dr. Louise? Uh, I don't know. This fear quickly became poignant. Man. Look at the word that something. Look at the word that makes something that uh, is more is stronger than him. Yes, exactly. And you can look at this whole. This fear quickly became. This fear quickly became what? It quickly became poignant. Well, if you know that he is getting, he ha, he knows that he's got a better chance of dying rather than living, and he's afraid of that, then poignant means strong. It's strong. It's a strong feeling. It's a very clear idea that you have in your head. So you could reread this as this fear quickly became stronger as he realized that he was no longer, it was no longer a mere matter of freezing. Poignant means that it's crystal clear. It's, um, it's a strong feeling. You know exactly what it is. And we know that poignant means this because we know what his fear was, which is death. And we know that he's having all of these thoughts. So we can determine then by the context that poignant means that this fear became stronger and stronger and stronger and it became a really clear feeling in his mind that he was in severe danger of dying in the snow, in the, in the storm. Does that make sense? Yes, we can change for the word obvious. Obvious? In this context, in this context. You could, yes, you could. Uh huh. This fear quickly became. Well, we know that he's already fearing it because the text tells us a certain fear of death, dull and oppressive, came to him. What is what does oppressive it's mean? Poignant is uh, adjective. Say that again. This poignant is adjective. Poignant is objective? Adjective. Adjective. Um, yeah, yes, yeah. And uh, it's uh, kind of big. Yeah, it's a big, clear, strong thought in this context. Mm hmm Exactly. So you, since you can try to replace, that's another thing with context clues, try to replace the word that's giving you trouble with one that you think might make sense and that can help you as well. Like I said, you could change out poignant for stronger and reread it that way. You could reread it so it says this fear quickly became stronger as he realized that it was no longer a mere matter of freezing. Okay, um, hold on one second, let me close this door. Okay. Is that any more clear to you guys, or no? Or is it still kind of shady? No, it is clear. It's clear? Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let's do one more.
Okay, let's look at this passage. <clears throat> Deep down below the surface, he could feel it. The sensation developed into pain that grew acute. And still he endured it, holding the flame of the matches clumsily to the bark that would not light readily because his own burning hands were in the way, absorbing most of the flame. So let's try to figure out the meaning of acute here. Okay? So, that's a different, that's a di that's a different kind of acute, Christoph. Um, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> um, but, but, but I, I, it means, it it means Oh, sharp. go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Louise. No, yes, I think it is the, the pain uh, show up suddenly and very strong. Mm hmm Okay. What else? Think, Go ahead, Coco. I think, uh, things, are, things are going uh, worse or something, it will be like dangerous or something like that. Okay. All right, Marcos, do you have an idea? Suddenly, maybe. Suddenly? Okay. Okay. Um, you're all kind of right. <laughs> um, sharp, kind of. Um, acute pain is pain that won't go away. It's pain that won't go away. So if the sensation developed into pain that grew acute, it is a sharp or a strong pain that won't go away. Okay? It's not like you, um, I don't know, it's not like you cut your finger and it hurts for a second, but then the pain goes away. Acute pain stays with you. It doesn't go away. So, um, yes. And how did you figure this out, guys? How did you figure out what acute meant in this particular context? In this particular, so I know acute uh, meaning, uh, three meanings, like acute, you are smart, acute angle for <laughs> this, and acute is sharp. So, mm -hmm. I know uh, meaning of acute. Okay, well, you know the meaning, so that's different, Christoph. I'm asking how you would use the context in order to figure it out. If you did not know the meaning of acute... So, so around the words. Right. What words around this would let you know that acute means a sharp pain that won't go away? Uh, so, uh, it's growing and I have to look for uh, adjective uh, that uh, uh, describe this growing. And uh, uh, acute is... Uh, <laughs> Develop because the that grew acute and uh, fast, sharp. So you're looking for this uh, describing the group. Okay, Dr. Louise, what were you gonna say? Because the hands uh, was burning, was in flame. Mhm, mm mhm, mm yeah. Because of that. Um, you could use part of that. Um, you know that. Um, well. The burning hands are part of why the why the bark won't light. Look a little bit before that. Look at the beginning of the sentence that starts after acute. Mm -hmm. It says, and still he endured it. And still he endured it. If you're enduring something, do you generally endure things that are pleasant or painful? You struggle. Yeah, endure, if you have to endure something, it's, it's a struggle. It's not fun. It's, it's not pleasant. So if, you, if he is enduring this acute pain, then we have to realize that there's something special about this pain. And if he's still enduring it, we can assume from the context that this pain is sharp 
it's ongoing and it's not going it's not going away anytime soon using context clues takes practice by the way this isn't a skill that you're going to you know just learn overnight it takes a lot of practice it requires a lot of reading and it requires being persistent enough to sit there and think it out um, it requires you to sit there and think about it a while until you have come up with an answer instead of just being like oh well I have no idea so I'm just gonna look it up in the dictionary if you want to get good at using context clues you do have to use the the process more than one time you're gonna have to use it over and over again and a good way to check and see how well you're doing is to do it a few times you know write down the word that you are trying to figure out from the context and once you've come up with your own definition of it, then go look in the dictionary and see. I did this. You did that? Good, Marcos. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. But, uh, how did, how did it go? Wrong. That's okay. I was okay. wrong many times. That's okay. That's totally okay. That's totally okay. Um, but keep doing that. That's exactly what I want you to do because that's what's going to get you good at eventually you're gonna get good at guessing what these unfamiliar words mean so good I'm proud of you Marcos good job nice so yeah that's that's exactly the process that I want you to use is try to come up with your own definition write down your own definition then go look it up in the dictionary and see how close you are you could be right you could be wrong but the point is, is that you're using the process of trying to find, or trying to figure out the, uh, the meaning of a word through context clues. And eventually, I promise you will get good at it. You will get good at it. So, it's, I mean, it's an acquired skill. I, st I mean, I still use this skill to this day. Yes, I speak native English. Yes, I have a degree in English. Um, and a degree in creative writing, so I've done plenty of reading in my lifetime, but that doesn't mean I know every single word. I come across words all the time that I'm like, I have no clue what that means. So I will use this process, and um, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it, you know, you, can, you can't be right all the time. So, but it's, it's a good skill to use, for sure. Sometimes uh, Latin help in, in this process. Mm. Like knowing roots and stuff, yeah. 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 In my it it's happened when we read when we read classical books. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Shakespeare in on the yeah. original. Yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult. It is. You have to use these clues. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and see that's what I did for four years. I studied British lit, so. <laughs> I read all that old, old stuff that, you know, had lots of strange words, and I had no choice. I would have never, ever gotten through school if I had just had my nose stuck in a dictionary the whole time. I had to use context clues in order to get through the 50 to 100 pages of reading I had to do a night. So, yeah, absolutely. And yes, Marcos, it is interesting how some words that you know in one context can mean something else in another. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Coco, I know that you were concerned with summarizing. Yes. What, uh, what, did, you, what did you find to be the most difficult part about summarizing? Uh, do you mean, uh, is it difficult to summarize? Yeah, because you mentioned it, that it, that you mentioned to me that it was really hard for you to summarize. What makes yeah. what makes summarizing difficult for you? What do you struggle with? Yes, uh, I think because the the words are a bit difficult, and when I have just tried to use uh, the context clues, <laughs> my expectations were all <laughs> wrong. So I just yeah, I just um, look. Uh, on the dictionary about the meaning of words, but the most part is, as I told you, I have some problems in writing, 
So yes, um, but but I tried my best. I, I think I did good. I don't know. Um, okay. I will see. Yeah. Now you know that when you summarize something, you it's to put it in your own words. So yes. Okay. Yes. This All is right. yeah. Okay. This is what I have. No. It, did you? It is really difficult. Yes. <laughs> What do you find difficult about summarizing, Marcos? Oh, you you just ha just have the text in, in front of you and saying with with your own words it it's difficult. Make sure you close the book. Don't have it right in, or close close the the or yeah. minimize the window. Yeah. I I, I just I just did uh, the exercise you used. So here in the video, uh -huh. uh, begin with uh, three paragraphs. Yes. But I, I, I did it what word, word did when you summarize something. Get some, some words in the sentence and there, there is it. It, it. it is not my words. It's just words came from text and it, okay. it's not summarized for me. <laughs> okay. Yes. It is I difficult. Realize. Okay. Did any of you find mm. it difficult to like leave some things out? Because that's usually everybody's problem with summarizing is that they want to include everything and then it doesn't become a summary. You might as well just read the text out loud. I mean, okay, <laughs> let me let me give you guys an example. Um, let's use the text. Let uh, me. Uh huh. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For me, I just uh, have taken some notes, and then from the notes, I summarized. What do you think? Is that good or? Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's okay. good. Yeah. Um, let me screen share. Oh, I don't want to do it this way though. Hold on. Okay, all right, let me screen share this with you guys. <laughs> okay, so um, if in the video I mentioned that start with something, and I know this is small, but to start with something like, you know, three paragraphs and just start by trying to summarize that. Okay, so um, for an example, if I were to summarize the first three paragraphs of this particular story. I might say something like, the story begins on a very cold and gray day and we are introduced to a man who um, appears to be traveling through this um, this scene. Um, he is not worried about the weather and it takes place in the Yukon and he has a um, he ha oh, well actually that's not the first three paragraphs. I'm like trying to do the whole thing and what I'm like and he has a dog with him. I mean you don't have to be a great um, you don't have to be a, a great storyteller, Marcos, um, at all. Um, and there's a lumberjack traveling in a cold place who had some adventures building a fire. That's actually not a terrible summary, Marcos. Um, it's not the most detailed summary in the, in the world, but it's not a bad one. Um, we're not sure if, that, if he's a lumberjack or not, to be quite honest, but, um, you know, he is trying to get to a camp. Um, it's been so long since I read the first part of the story. I'm kind of trying to figure out. So you could say something, like I said, you could start off with saying, the story opens describing the scenery. It's a very cold day. The sun is not shining. Um, it's well below zero. 
and we are introduced to a man who does not seem to be concerned about the weather even though he's traveling through it. Something like that. That's a pretty basic summary. The more, the better you get at it, um, the more details you can include. I mean, you could start by saying the story opens on a very, what is it, cold and gray? Yeah, the day starts in a very, at a very cold and gray day with the man looking at his watch as he is deciding how long it's going to take him to get to a camp. We know that the man is not concerned about the cold, even though it seems like he probably should be, and that the scene, scenery where he's at, which is up in the Yukon, is covered in ice and snow. Something like that. Coco, did you write down a summary for us? Um, actually, yes, I did, but I have written, uh, how to say that, uh, it is not really a summary, but it is a summary. <laughs> you want to share it? You want to share it with us? Ah, uh, I didn't write it on the... I can read. That's I fine. Can... Sure, go for it. Okay. Uh, the whole summary or just the last uh, part? Do the whole thing. Whoa. <laughs> Give us your best summary of the whole story, Coco. Uh, well, I want to ask a question before. Sure. Um, w when I am writing a summary, shall I say maybe the narrator tells or the, nar the, nar the writer or something like that or not? You can. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, you can. Um, and a named man uh, is making his way through uh, through the white snow of uh, Alaska. Uh, it was really, really cold. Uh, he is not concerned about the cold. Or uh, the lack of sun, but uh, but uh, not because he he used to it, but he actually a newcomer. He is actually a newcomer. The the narrator tells us that the man uh, the man is in trouble, and uh, he is without imagination. Oh God! <laughs> no, that's good. Keep going. You're doing great. You're doing great so far. Okay, <clears throat> the, uh, that guy knows uh, knows the day is cold, but uh, doesn't really spend any time uh, thinking about how uh, his frail human body will stand up to uh, to it. You're doing good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> okay. Uh, he he doesn't seem to understand how teeny and uh, uh, ant like he is. Uh, he is in this uh, giant abyss of Arctic snow, spitting into the air. The man hears a sharp crack and realizes that. Uh, his saliva has frozen before hitting the snow. This means that it must be colder than uh, 50 degrees below zero. Um, the narrator tells us that the, the man is uh, uh, hidden from a mining camp on Henderson Creek. Where, uh, where a bunch of his buddies are waiting for him with a nice fire and some tasty bacon. Um, th there are nine hours of hiking ahead for, of the man, 
um, so so we so we readers get the sense that he is pretty uh, tall, even if he doesn't know all that much about uh, ha uh, about Henderson. When he, when he finally teaches Henderson Greek, the man starts working along the ice. The grid is frozen at the point to the bottom, but there are some underground hot springs that make little pockets of water in the ice. And it is very dangerous to get your feet wet when it is cold out. Always the gentleman, uh, the gentleman decides to send the dog ahead of him. As expected, the do this is the best part I like. When, <laughs> when he tried, <laughs> yes, okay. As he expect, as expected, the dog breaks through the ice and gets <laughs> its legs wet. The man helps get the ice off the animal's feet, and uh, is surprised by how quickly his fingers go numb when he takes them out of his mittens. After stop after he stops to build a fire, the man whips um, out his half frozen biscuits or biscuits, right? Uh -huh, and, biscuits. Yeah, and shows down. When he gets up, the dog is reluctant reluctant. Some words I have used them from the dictionary, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um to Oh no! Coco, where'd she go? That was awesome, Coco. Come back. <laughs> that was really good. Um, I know that she wrote it down, but that that's, I mean, what Coco has been telling us thus far is a really, really good um, in-depth summary without telling us everything. Um, it's really... This is actually, this is what, um, oh, here she's back, okay. <laughs> Coco! Uh -oh. Sorry. No, that's okay. You're doing such a beautiful job. I was just telling the guys, this is a really good example of an in-depth summary that is not telling us everything that gives us enough details about the story. It's really, you're doing a beautiful job. A beautiful, oh, thank you. beautiful job. Uh, and to be honest, sometimes, uh, I, I mean, sometimes I, uh, I ask someone to help me. It is not, okay. He is not a native, yeah, but just because, yeah, to just correct, correct some ideas and something. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Mm -hmm. um, okay, since I, I was gonna have us play a summarizing game today where everybody, gives their own summary of the text um, and we everybody would vote um, on it but I'm gonna change it a little bit because I know Marcos didn't finish it and I know Dr. Louise didn't finish it and um, at this point um, I love you all but I think Coco would blow you guys out of the water so far so I want to make it fair for everybody so this is what we're going to do this is what I want you to do. Once you finish, and now that Coco's given you guys a really good example of this, this is what I want you to do. I want everyone to write, yes, I know, I want everyone to write a summary of the story and post it on the course page, okay? I will post um, I will post something that says, you know, paste, copy and paste your summary here. And so once everybody does that, then we will vote. And you can't vote for yourself. This was part of the game. You cannot vote for yourself. But you will vote for whoever's summary you think is the best. But you can't vote for yourself. And whoever gets the most votes wins. Okay, so I want everyone to write a summary of the story and post it on the course page. Um, in fact, I will um, 
Mauricio. Ah, Mauricio. Ah, Mauricio. Ah, Mauricio. Hello, Chine. Good afternoon. Sorry Hello. Good afternoon. How are you, Hi, Mauricio? Mauricio? Hello, Louise. My dear classmates. Uh, sorry to interrupt for interrupting. I'm, oh, I'm going to be please. Si in silence. In silence. No, 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 no. Um, we were just uh, we were talking about summarizing Mauricio, and um, Dr. Louise and Marcos didn't get a chance to finish the story. Did you have a chance to finish it or no? No, to tell the, to you the truth, no, I, I didn't. Okay. Perfect. I didn't. Okay. Well, that's okay, because you guys are all in luck. So, Mauricio, what I was telling everyone is I want everyone to write a summary of the story and post it on the course page, okay? Um, and what you can do is you can uh, send me send me your summary before you post it and I will correct like the grammar and, and that kind of stuff if you're worried about that. Um, but what we're going to do Mauricio is once everyone has their summary posted then we will vote on whose summary is the best. Okay, sounds and, great. <laughs> and you cannot vote for yourself. Okay, and you cannot vote for yourself. So I will post you self, really, Shanae. I swear I'm an English teacher, yourself. So um, I will post all of this on um, the course page explaining it and whatnot, but that will be um, the homework, uh, besides the homework that is, I'm going to assign in just a minute, um, for between now and Wednesday. So you guys will have your work cut out for you between now and Wednesday. So um, Ma Mauricio, make sure that you watch this video after class um, because yes. Coco was giving us a beautiful summary of the story. So um, that'll give you kind of an idea of what I'm, I'm looking for. So, I can imagine. <clears throat> I can imagine. Yeah, she did a great job. So I, I told you, Mauricio. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good. So, yeah, so, but um, this will be a great exercise for everybody to do. So, um, and sometimes it's easier to write it out than it is to just say it on the fly. But I do still want you to practice summarizing skills out loud because what is the purpose of summarizing? What does summarizing help you with? Memorize. To catch, to catch. Yeah, your memorize. Memory. Yeah, your memory. It's memorize. to help you with your memory. Yeah, it's to help you with your memory. So don't forget to um, say things to to summarize out loud as well. Okay, guys. So um, for this week, we are switching gears a little bit, and we are moving into nonfiction. Okay, nonfiction. So um, this week, um, what I'm going, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be reading two different texts. The first one is today through Wednesday, and the second one uh, you will be reading Thursday and Friday. Um, Wednesday and Thursday will be um, Jeopardy games to go with the text, just like last week. And um, what else do I want to say? So what we're doing is we're going to be utilizing the skills that we learned last week and applying them to nonfiction. However, the skills that we learned last week have a few differences between how you use them in fiction and how you use them in nonfiction. Um, after this class, I will be posting a video on scanning and inferencing and how you use both of those skills in nonfiction. So that will be today's video and quiz. Um, tomorrow, um, we'll be talking, I will be talking about note-taking and active reading in nonfiction. Wednesday, 
Um, I will be talking about bringing all the skills together, which that will kind of be kind of like a, it'll be talking about how to bring them all together in nonfiction, but the video will really cover also how you can bring all the skills together in, in fiction as well. And then Thursday and Friday, I actually decided I'm going to give you two new tips, okay? Mm -hmm. Two new reading skills, bonus skills. So Thursday will be bonus skill number one, and Friday will be bonus skill number two. So, um, Great. yeah, so you'll have two new skills. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. I want them to be a surprise. Um, but I think that you will find both of those bonus skills very helpful. And both, uh, both of those bonus skills um, are good for both fiction and nonfiction. So um, we have about 13 minutes left. Just out of curiosity, what do you think would be different between these skills in fiction and nonfiction? Inference. Mm. Yeah. The skills? The names of, uh, for example, here you have uh, on the name. Uh, Vocabulary. Man. Uh, And uh, in style of writing, and the information is more accurate in fiction. Yeah. In fiction or nonfiction? Non in nonfiction. Non sorry, in nonfiction. Okay, so Coco, you said um, the style of writing is different. How do you how do you think the style of, of writing is different? Um, I what think way? that. Yeah, I think and uh, the, the style of writing in the non-fiction pieces uh, will be uh, more easier. Okay, be easier. Okay, a simple. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um. Freestyle, freestyle. I mean, uh, you don't have to keep certain rules and searching in, in, in fiction, but in non-fiction. You have to, to look for information or to be more, to be more structured. Okay. There is no much space to read in between lines. Ah. You think so, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So maybe no more reading between the lines. Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. So we talked about that the style of writing is different. Maybe it's easier. Maybe it's more structured. Maybe no more reading between the lines. What I else? think you stick uh, to historical facts. Okay. Anything else you can think of in terms of the style of writing being different between fiction and nonfiction? Uh, maybe uh, the use of vocabulary. Do you think the vocabulary will be easier, harder, or just different? Yeah, easier. Just different. Just, just different. Okay. Is it right to say the aesthetics? The aesthetics? Aesthetics. The aesthetic, aesthetics of the, of the style. No, no, aesthetics. Mm. Aesthetics. Aesthetic. Aesthetics? Uh, Is that the word you're looking for, Mauricio? Yes, yes, I think. Um, aesthetics is like um, uh, it, the, 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 how aesthetically pleasing something is. So, like fiction, we say, is aesthetically pleasing because. It appeals to our senses. It appeals to us being able to envision things or um, things of that nature. Is that what you're talking about? 
Yes, the style maybe is yes the the way the the flowering the the way. Oh. You, <laughs> the flowery text. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really exhausted today. I understand. Don't worry. Uh, yes. Um, yes, the flowering style. The the way you you show the the situations and the characters, everything in nonfiction. Okay. All right. Um, Luis says, um, in fiction there are not characters and worrying about their uh, physiological features. Okay. Oh, so the conflict, yeah. There's no conflict. In There's it. no mm -hmm. conflict. You guys are going to be like, what? Um, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> this is great, though. No, I'm loving this. Marcos, what is different now, Marcos? There's there's a good point. What is different about the author's purpose in nonfiction versus fiction? I, I believe that non nonfiction don't 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 want to entertain the the mm -hmm. reader. Yes. What is the purpose of nonfiction? Inform. Uh, inform. Yes. Exactly. Good. Yes. So the purpose is the purpose is different. So, uh huh, that's another thing. Okay, different purpose. Can you think of anything else that might be different between reading fiction and nonfiction? How might these skills differ from fiction and nonfiction? Do you guys have any ideas? Mm, but I don't even imagine. That. I don't punctual really punctual don't know. Uh, I think that in the in nonfiction you can you have to to look for punk, very punctual uh, data. Okay, so hard facts. Hard facts, okay. Yes. okay. Named people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's go skill by skill. Um, this is just predictions, and then as the videos unfold for you guys throughout the week, you can see how right or wrong <laughs> you are. Um, how might scanning be different in fiction or nonfiction? Scanning. Do you think there'd be any difference in how you scan in nonfiction versus how you scan in fiction? Mm. I think it's scanning. <laughs> in well, both if cases. you if you if you are in a reading class, you have to use the same the same scanning. Okay, I mean, so you guys think that scanning will be the same? Yes. Okay. It might. Yeah, it what about making inferences? What do you think the difference between fiction and nonfiction would be for inferences? Mm, are you have to use the no difference because you have to uh, use environment uh, of uh, this book. The author was mentioned like history, historical facts. Okay, so instead of, instead uh, of... You don't look between lines, but you look uh, surround, like... Uh, okay. Sometimes maybe uh, who out or are meeting. Uh, so instead of using the text, um, to make your inferences, you use historical fact. Is that what you're saying, Christoph? Okay. Yes. I could say that uh, they are the same because uh, uh, it depends on uh, the na their narrative way of the okay. writers. I mean, uh, in the in nonfiction. The 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 author can can describe something that you want to where you want to participate. What okay. you want to participate in, in the novel. So you have to imagine. Okay. And and 
and and and the deuce. Is it right to say the deuce? Ideas. The the deuce. The do the do say the deuce. The deuce. Is it right to say that? Guessing. Guess. Guessing. Yes. yes, guessing, right, G guessing. Oh, deduce, to deduce, okay, uh-huh, okay, all right. What do you guys, or do you think, how do you think active rating or note-taking might be different? I think active reading is more present. Say that again, Marcos? I think active reading is more present in non-fiction. In nonfiction, yeah. If if you don't un if you do not understand in in simple words, you really have to come back and read it, everything again. Okay. Okay. So you're saying you have to be much much more aware of what you're reading in nonfiction. Yeah. What about context clues? Do you think that would be any different? I think it is the same. The same? Okay. Um, she make him send in making inferences. Um, I think in nonfiction it would be better, or it would be, um, I'd say that not better, but it would be more helpful if you want, because in nonfiction we are just uh, dealing with some maybe supernatural, maybe actions or something like that. It may, it may be. So it will be to make inference. It will be helpful. But in fiction, okay. yes. In fiction, I'm talking. Oh God, I mix it. <laughs> more. So you're saying it would be more helpful in fiction to make inferences, right? Yeah. No. In non yeah. In nonfiction. Yes. Okay. What about? Summarizing. Do you think that summarizing will be any different? No. Just summarize it. So you guys think that three out of the five are going to be the same, and the only things that will be different are inferences and active reading. Uh, I think summarizing. Okay. Is it's it, it's harder in nonfiction, but okay. I, I can I cannot explain. Okay. I think yes, it, I agree. It, it is because uh, you you have to preserve information in the text. Okay, so you have to make sure that you're one hundred percent accurate while you're summarizing in yeah. nonfiction, and that might make it more difficult. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is great. I love this. This is fabulous. I, I agree with Marcus. It's easier. Uh, to summarize in fiction, okay. Than than in, in, in nonfiction, fiction you had. It's more forgiving. Fiction. Allows you to make more mistakes in fiction than in nonfiction. Yeah. Uh huh. You 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 have space to to tell things like uh, I wrote in the tech, the checkbox. Mm -hmm. There was a, there was a lumberjack and blah blah yeah. blah. In yeah. nonfiction, because you because you just don't have it. Yeah. Don't don't, don't, don't you can't. Yeah, even though we don't know if he was a lumberjack or not, it really doesn't matter too much. We still get the idea of what the story is about. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So, you don't like fiction, Marcos? I really don't like it. Uh, uh, I just can't, can't read it. Read it. Uh, I read this with... Uh, Many. It it was hard to me. I I, I can't I, I can't enjoy it when I I'm reading fiction. I I don't know, but I <laughs> I don't know why. But I, I. You have to let yourself get lost in a book. In the um, you know. The more close uh, the more close to fiction I read is 
some allegories about um, uh, about the, sub the subject, you know, the okay. the subject that I, I like, like you, uh, like historical fiction, something like that. Some like, something like that. I'm I'm programmer, so I, I like to to read to read uh, histories about uh, uh, the the old the old guys the old hackers and and this is the more fiction I, I can read gotcha 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 yeah see I've always been a, I've always been a big fan of fiction nonfiction it's a bore it's a bore to me but um, you know yeah so um, absolutely. I prefer fiction too. I do too. Yeah. Fiction I, is the best. Yeah. Yeah, I like fiction. So, but not everybody because does. I don't prefer non-fiction because uh, they are biased. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. This okay. is like history, you know. Mm -hmm. History is uh, written by winners. By winners. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's always biased. This is not like a math. Okay. All right. All right. I think you have to be very careful who you read when you read nonfiction. So, um, I mean, regard. I don't. I don't think it matters if you what you read. It's there's going to be a bias to it somehow. So, you just have to be aware of that. Um. Okay, guys. What I'm going to do is, because um, I still have to upload, I've got the video saved on my computer, but I still have to upload it to YouTube. So um, it might be another 30 to 45 minutes before I have today's stuff, um, homework and everything, on the, um, on the website for you, but it will be there. Um, you have until, really until Wednesday, but don't forget there will be a new video and homework tomorrow as well. And don't forget your summary um, for to build a fire. We have to summarize something new? Just no, just, just summarize to build a fire. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll put I'll put I'll put the directions on the website. So um, but um, I'm really excited to get started in nonfiction with you guys. I think this will be fun. I think you'll be really surprised at some of what you came up with here and what the reality is so that'll be good um, as always if you have any questions please let me know and um, I will see you guys on Wednesday so good job today guys uh, well so. in May it will be Thursday you're not going to be here Wednesday Mm, I will be Thursday. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I forget. I'm, yeah. I have now Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I forget. I always forget that. So, yes. So, um, but I will see you guys then. And until then, happy reading. <laughs> so, Should I? Should yes. I please. I'm going to link the sentences I have written concerning the summary, and uh, I will send it to you to okay. just fix it. Please. Sure. Yeah. Yep, no worries. Yeah, and that's that's open to everybody. Once you write your summary, if you want me to uh, fix the capitalization and stuff and send it back to you, just yes. let me know. So, yes. okay. yep, that's fine. I'm okay. Bye. Bye, Thank Bye you everyone. Thank you, Thank guys. You. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.